The news day continues here on One News Now. I'm Pauline Verzosa. Pag-asa hits back at Albay 2nd District Representative Joey Salceda after the lawmaker accused them of, quote, sleeping on the job. In a now-deleted Facebook post, Salceda said the State Weather Bureau risked lives because of their seemingly late updates about severe tropical storm Enteng. This as some parts of Bicol experienced flash floods and heavy rain. Pagasa rejected Salcedo's accusation. Kami po ay uh, 24 oras na sumusubaybay kapag uh, merong mga ganitong uh, inclement weather. Kami po ay hindi natutulog ano? uh, at gusto po namin ipaalam ang impormasyon of course sa ating mga kababayan lalong lalo na yung mga maapektuhan ng pagbaha, ng bagyo at ng anumang kalamidad. Salceda also said Pagasa failed to adhere to the PAR plus 5 rule. Now this means the Weather Bureau has to inform the public ahead of a possible storm, even if it is still outside the Philippine area of responsibility. In response, Pagasa insisted they adhered to the rule. Pag nasa labas pa ng PAR, within the uh, plus 5 degrees uh, from the 135 degrees longitude, uh, na boundary ng PAR ay tropical cyclone advisory po yung papalabas natin lalo na pinasaan po natin ang mga kapekto sa ating bansa in the coming days. Public Works Secretary Manny Bonoan says it is not possible to have just one unified flood control master plan. And here's an excerpt from his interview on The Big Story. What do you think happened this time? What is your assessment? Well, um... There are areas that are susceptible to flooding uh, even at this point in time. Actually, you see, uh, the flood control programs uh, that we are undertaking is just part of the solution to the flooding problem. Um, you know, it's, it should have to uh, be uh, to address flooding problems. It has to be done absolutely uh, um, holistically. You know, uh, for one thing, uh, when we came in into this uh, administration two, two years ago. I noticed that actually the river beds uh, along the rivers, many of the rivers, are very shallow. So uh, you can expect that any any uh, big rainfall, uh, uh, the the rivers will uh, will have to overflow. So uh, I'm sure that there are uh, there are other projects that have been undertaken undertaken uh, over the past years, but uh, it's not enough actually to mitigate unless unless the uh, river bed. Uh, are, are dredged and desilted so that the carrying capacity of the rivers uh, should be increased. Sec Manny, um, it's kind of fresh in my head. We spoke right after Karina. That was July 24. We yeah. spoke to you last week of July. Right after that, about a week after, you showed up in Senate and the senators were questioning you on what happened to all the flood yeah. control problems. So I'm not going to ask you those again. But I, what I want to ask you, Sec, is what have we started doing since Bagyong Karina to try to kind of play catch up because as we know, we are very much behind in the implementation and even the master planning of all these flood control projects, which as we found out, are not integrated. Well, um, if you're looking for uh, the integrated flood control uh, projects, actually are unique for each river basin. Actually. In each river basin, there are several components, like, just like Metro Manila. Metro Manila has, I think, about seven components, including uh, the technical uh, solutions and the uh, uh, social and environmental uh, components, actually. Uh, as far as the uh, engineering uh, interventions are, uh, are concerned, actually, I think the Department of Public Works and Highways over the years have been undertaking the, uh, the components uh, when the master plan that was uh, formulated uh, with the assistance of the World Bank, I understand, in 2012. So, um, my information is that many of these have already been undertaken, but I, uh, there are still many components, uh, engineering components, that have to be undertaken uh, for the Pasig Marikina flood management uh, control project. Um, you can appreciate that uh, in Karina, the Pasig River and Marikina River did not overflow, despite the fact that uh, major malaki yung rainfall that uh, came came down. No? The only problem in inside Metro Manila is that um, 
the uh, rainwaters that are poured in, inside Metro Manila cannot be uh, drained immediately because, for one thing, it has to go through the runoff has to go through the drainage uh, system of Metro Manila, which is actually very antiquated. And uh, it's been there for many, many years, more than 50 years. Uh, not actually uh, designed already for the requirements uh, this time. Um, all the, this is part of the uh, flood control uh, master plan. I, this is still have to be undertaken. The Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development admits low budget utilization rate. Undersecretary Randy Escolamo says only 8 million out of a 200 million peso budget dedicated to shelter assistance during disasters has been used. Senators criticize the bureaucratic hurdles in accessing aid given that it should be done to provide relief to victims of disasters. Housing Secretary Jose Rizalino Acruzar says the agency will consider easing the rules for the program. Beneficiaries of the Integrated Disaster Shelter Assistance Program are supposed to receive 50,000 pesos in cash assistance. We'll be back with more stories after this break. Keep it here on One News. Welcome back. You're still watching One News Now. I'm Pauline Verzosa. Let's now take a quick look at today's other headlines. In the Philippine Star, the government has provided more than 60 million pesos worth of assistance to those affected by Tropical Storm Enteng. The Presidential Communications Office says the aid was given to nearly 304,000 persons or 80,000 families in eight storm-hit regions. Meanwhile, in business world, the national government's outstanding debt hit a fresh high of 15.69 trillion pesos as of end July. The Bureau of the Treasury says the debt level rose by 1.33 percent from the 15.48 trillion peso figure as of end June. Now in other news, the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board, or MTRCB, defended its decision to slap an X rating to two local movies. MTRCB Chairperson Lala Soto Antonio said the documentary film Alipato at Moog was rated X because it, quote, undermines the faith and confidence in the government. The award-winning film was about the search for the missing activist Jonas Burgos. Antonio also justified their decision to give an X rating to Dear Satan, a film about how a child influenced Satan to be good. I have seen the film. I joined the board. I am offended as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Ano demonic? No, it is not demonic, but it is a depiction of, it has a different depiction of Satan becoming good. Satan will never ever be good. Now, during the budget hearing, Senator Jingoy Estrada raised concerns about the lack of regulation in streaming sites. He said minors can easily access X-rated films in streaming services such as Viva Max. In response, Antonio said streaming sites are not yet part of their jurisdiction. In the judgment of the board, the film tends to undermine the faith and confidence of the people in their government or duly constituted authorities. Therefore, the first review committee um, rated it X. At dahil Burmans na, nagsisimula ka na bang maglagay ng Christmas decors? Well, patok ngayon sa mga mamimili ang isang pamilihan sa Maynila dahil sa mura at maraming Christmas decors na pwedeng bilhin. At para bigyan ng mukha ang balita, Mobile Journal, Denise Valdesancho. Months na! Handa na ba ang Christmas decors ng lahat? Makukulay na Christmas lights, iba't ibang size ng Christmas balls, at naglalakihang mga Santa Claus na sumasayaw pa, malayo pa man. Tila Pasko na dito, sa Dapitan, sa Maynila. Kwento ng isa sa mga nagtitinda na si Jeron Contreras. 
As early as August pala, naghahanda na sila para sa Christmas. nag po kami ng aming mga pang-Christmas decor is nung uh, August second week. Marami na pong bumibili kasi ayaw nila pong makipagsabayan sa uh, Bermans na mas maraming tao po dito. Kompleto rito sa Dapitan Arcade sa halagang 250 pesos. Makakabili ka na ng 8 meters na Christmas lights. Kung pang decorate naman ng Christmas tree, kukutikotitap na ang puno mo for as low as 180 pesos. Ito po ang pinakamabenta sa amin. Ang amin pong garland 8 feet. Meron din pong mga ganitong wreath. Yan, ang ganda-ganda. 2-5. Kung ikukumpara sa iba, aba, dito na lang raw mamili at di hamak na mas mura. Mas mura po sa amin, hindi kami pumapatong ng triple o, o mas ma, ano, yung presyong masa lang. Yun nga po, maraming pumupunta dito na sabi mas mura sa online. Ang sabi namin, ma, mas maganda dito, kita nyo na yung item. Kasi sa online, minsan, pag dumating, ay, bakit ganito, hindi pala siya maganda. Sa limang taong pagki-Christmas shopping naman ni Fred, pinapayo niya na maaga pa lang, mas mabuting mamili na. Last August, nandito na kami. To check out pati yung prices kasi mas mababa pag mas malayo pa yung Christmas. Nakaka-overwhelm daw talaga sa dami ng pagpipilian. Kaya dapat handa rin ang iyong bulsa. <laughs> Sumusobra na konti kasi ang dami ng extras na ang cute, ang gandang pandagdag. So, dala na rin kayo na extra in case. <laughs> Bandang Oktubre raw nagsisimulang dumami ang mamimili sa Dapitan Orchid. Kaya kung nagbabalak ka man pumunta, mas maiging agahan mo na para hindi maipit sa siksikan. Kaya mga kapatid, as early as now, mag na, lalo kung tight ang budget para iwas overspend at para masaya lahat ngayong Pasko. Mobile Journal, Denise Valdesancho po. Hatid ang mukha ng balita. And those are the top stories of the hour this morning. I'm Pauline Rososa. We are One News.